Welcome to another episode of Hack Naked TV, recorded October 1st, 2015. I'm your host, Aaron Lyons, and today we're going to be talking about BitPay, more fallout from the OPM breach, Volkswagen, and new flaws found in TrueCrypt. This episode is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in pen testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. And by Cyberry, get the latest hacking and security training from cyberry.it. Visit hacknaked.tv forward slash cyberry for a referral link. So BitPay was breached last year in 2014, and they lost about one point. $85 million. They had cyber insurance and they made a claim and it was denied. <laughs> Gotta love those insurance companies, right? So the loss was due to a breach by their, by, of a business partner of theirs. And to quote the insurance company, the policy does not afford coverage for indirect losses caused by hacking into the computer system of someone other than the insured. So, cyber insurance. Maybe it's not such a great thing after all. Insurance companies are always going to find a loophole. If your company carries cyber insurance, you may want to go out and reread the fine print. Also, you may want to review what access those third parties have to your network and systems. On to the OPM breach, continued fallout from that months later. First up, another four and a half million fingerprints have been discovered to have been taken during this breach. The original count was 1.1 million. This brings the total up to 5.6 million, close to six million fingerprints now have been taken. It just came out today, uh, or maybe yesterday, that the CIA has pulled staff from the Beijing embassy uh, due to the OPM breach. Uh, they fear that the breach could expose their agents working out of that embassy. Uh, this is sort of interesting. This is the first we've heard that, that uh, we're actually fearing exposure of government employees due to this breach. Also, just recently, the Chinese Prime Minister Xi, Xi Jinping, Jinping, I'm sure I slaughtered that, and President Obama, just this past Friday, came to an agreement that neither nation will engage in cyber espionage against the other for economic gain. Key words here being for economic gain. So this doesn't mean we're not going to continue doing cyber espionage against China or they're going to stop hacking us. It's just that we won't do it for economic gain. Uh, does this really change anything? Does this mean China won't hack our companies? No. There's a lot more to be gained from, from it than just money. Um, state secrets, leg up in manufacturing, even if they're not making a gain economically from it. I think this is just uh, politics and nothing really is gonna change here. Volkswagen was just recently brought into the limelight. Uh, it was discovered by some independent researchers that they were running a sophisticated algorithm on their vehicles that would only engage the full emissions controls during testing and disable them afterwards. Uh, this is a pretty sort of cool hack in that you know they could detect when it was hooked up to emissions testing and disable it when it wasn't. Um, but it's violating a lot of uh, a lot of regulatory uh, policies that we have in the U.S., including the Clean Air Act, and they're coming under attack from the EPA for that and the public as a whole. Uh, there's a lot more to this story than just that. Uh, this gets into the whole argument about being able to reverse engineer the code on a machine that you you run. Uh, farmers have been dealing this with dealing with this with John Deere for a long time. Um, it falls under to some of the right to repair uh, arguments we've been having in the United States along with a lot of others. Link to the Wired article in uh, our show notes that goes into depth, in depth, about a lot of these arguments that are around it. Some good reading there. 
Uh, just recently, uh, Google security researcher James Foshaw uh, found some new flaws in TrueCrypt that will allow for a full system compromise. Yay! Uh, so if you're running TrueCrypt, you better go out and update. Uh, wait, can't do that, right? So TrueCrypt was abandoned last year um, by its authors, stating that there were uh, possible unfixed security flaws in it. Could this have been one? Was this a, was this purposely introduced? Uh, were they forced to introduce this? You know, we can go into all the conspiracy theories all day long. Um, we're going to have to wait seven days, though, before we get the full details of these flaws. Uh, the security researcher um, stated on Twitter that he doesn't disclose the full details for seven days of any flaws that he finds, just in case there is some way to uh, patch it or give people a chance to, in this case, get off of TrueCrypt and get to some other um, encryption algorithm. I don't know, BitLocker maybe? It has to be more secure than TrueCrypt now. Uh, the last thing I wanted to bring up, if you didn't get a chance to go to DerbyCon or if you're at DerbyCon and you drank too much and didn't get to any of the talks or partied too much or went to a talk and weren't able to see another one, uh, Iron Geek has posted all of the videos of the talks up there on his website. The link is in our show notes. Be sure to go out there and check them out. Tons and tons of great, great videos out there. Definitely worth watching. Thanks, and that's all for this episode of Hack Naked TV. You can email us at the show at hacknaked.tv. Follow us on Twitter at Security Weekly. Watch our other show, Security Weekly. Uh, we record live every Thursday night. Um, and upcoming on October 16th is our 10th anniversary show. We'll be streaming all day live. So lots of fun there. Last year we lost a laptop. Question is, will we be losing a laptop this year? See you next time.